So same as usual, working at your own pace, making sure that nothing is bringing pain and discomfort as in joint pain. Um, if you get yourself the usual props, so the strap and the pillow, the ball, so that is there, I can use them if I need a little aid, a little support, we'll just lift them to the side. So if I'm seated, see if I can encourage that lift of the front, so trying to create space at the front of the body so that the diaphragm can descend towards the abdomen to create that breath and allowing the body to relax. If I'm laying down, just using the mantra to help me be aligned, to help me relax. So allowing the arms to come down the side, turning the palms to face up and towards the ceiling, encouraging the shoulders and the front of the chest to open up and relax. And then same as usual, I'm just going to try and do the usual checks of the body. So, how do I feel? Do I feel straight? Do I feel wonky? Um, is there more pressure on the right teeth than the left, on the right shoulder than the left? And then at the same time, awareness on the breath, making sure that I don't feel the breath into the collarbones or at the top of the chest. I'm trying to encourage the breath so to drop down into the belly. So really trying to get the nice, relaxing, diaphragmatic breathing going. Once I feel that the body's a little bit more settled, the breath feels that little bit more relaxed, I'm going to start working on the neck. I'm going to start off with a little skull rock. So if I'm seated, imagine your head to be against the wall. If I'm laying down, the back of the head is resting on the mat. I'm going to press the chin into the back of the throat as if I was trying to give myself a double chin. And then I'm going to lengthen the back of the neck. Then I'm going to release, and then I'm going to try again. So I'm going to press the chin down, go back towards the throat to see if I can lengthen, and then I'm going to release. I'm going to tuck and release it back. So see if I can try and create a little bit more space at the back of the neck, especially where the neck joins in with the skull, with the bottom of the head. To see if I can try and release some of the tension, some of the stiffness from across the neck. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And release it back. Returning the head back to the middle, I'm going to go for a little rotation side to side. See how far can I turn to the right? And then how far I'm going to be able to turn to the left. Notice the tension around the neck, noticing any restriction or any difference in movement between the left and the right side. With the corner of the eye, maybe just keeping an eye on the shoulder, making sure that the shoulder doesn't start sneaking up towards the head, doesn't start to move forward. The shoulders are sitting still, it's just the head that's moving on top. Four, three, two, one, and Release and back, returning the head back to the middle. And then from a little rotation, I'm going to go into a little lateral flexion. So bring the right ear down to the right shoulder. And then the left to the left. So gentle stretch up one side of the neck. And a nice gentle stretch up the other side of the neck. Again, making sure that it doesn't feel as if the shoulder is shrugging. See if I can keep it relaxed. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. 
one and releasing back. Releasing the shoulders, releasing the neck is a little bit more movement. I'm going to start to move in down into the upper back. So same as I did for the neck, I'm going to start off with a little flexion extension. So think of your rib cage moving. If you're lying down, you might want to support the head. So taking the hands to the back of the head, I'm going to tuck the chin in and then this time imagine to be rolling your face onto your chest. So I'm going to curl forward to see if I can round through the upper back as much as I can. And then in reverse, I'm going to drop the head back and then pushing the chest forward, see if I can try and encourage a nice extension into the upper back. So I'm going to drop it forward, round in the back. And then lifting, extending, pushing the chest forward, pushing the chest up, and then releasing back. So see if I can get that forward and back movement through the body. So pushing the ribcage to the back wall as I flex, and then pushing the chest to the front wall as I extend. Flexion into extension. Flexion into extension. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last time. And releasing back, adjusting the shoulders, relaxing the shoulders, releasing the upper back again from flexion extension, going into a little rotation. So if I'm seated, I might cross the arms onto the chest or bring the arms to the front, entirely up to you. If, you're, if I'm lying down, I'm going to reach the arms forward and then I'm going to start swinging my way around from one over to the other side. So rotating right, rotating left. Rotating right, rotating left. So these times, see if I can be aware of the movement happening at the back of the ribcage. So through the thoracic spine. See if I can ease some of this, some of the tension from the middle of the ribcage, from the middle of the back. Same as usual, making sure that I'm not forcing. And then as you're turning from side to side, especially if you're sitting up. See so if you can be aware of the chin still being lifted, the back is still being straight. So I'm not collapsing forward, I'm not rounding, I'm not dropping. I'm trying to sit nice and tall, the shoulders are down, and then turning from side, coming back to the center, to the other side. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, last one, and release it back. Releasing the shoulders, releasing the upper back, this is a little bit more movement into the back. I'm going to change one more time, going for the little side drop, for the little lateral flexion. So again, if I'm sitting up, imagine to be reaching something from down the side of the chest. So I'm going to flex it to the side, I'm going to bring the fingers down the side, towards the floor, come back to the center, and then flex into the other side. If I'm lying down, you might want to support the head again. So I'm going to pop one hand, one hand under the head, to carry the head as I'm reaching my way to one side, coming back to the center and then carry the body the other way as I'm reaching to the other side. Eight. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, 
3. Last one. And release it back. We're releasing the shoulders, releasing the back. It's a little bit more movement through the thoracic. We're going to drop down into the lumbar. So the that's a movement down into the bottom of the spine or down into the lower back. So I'm going to start off with a little flexion extension. So with a little pelvic tilt. So I'm going to rock back onto the tailbone. So I'm going to try and round the lower back. And then I'm going to come right onto the very tip of the seat bones. So I'm going to tilt back and then rock forward. Tilt back and then roll forward. So same as usual. See if you can think of the lower back rounding. The belly drawing in, tightening. And then I'm going to come back. So I'm going to tilt and release that tilt. Tilt and release that tilt. If you're laying down using the mat to guide you, as I tilt the pelvis back, I'm pressing the lower back into the mat. As I rock forward, I'm lifting it slightly off. So tilting and then releasing the tilt. Noticing any restriction, making sure that the movement is not causing pain. And then see if you can be aware of the nice and gentle tension at the front of the belly. So I'm going to try and draw the belly in as I flex and then relaxing as I extend back. Five. Four. Last one and releasing back, We're returning the hips back to the center, and then I'm going to go back into rotation again. If I'm laying down, I've got more movement as I'm free to move the legs. If I'm sitting up, the movement is limited as I'm sitting on the seat as I'm sitting on the hips. So if I'm seated up, I'm just going to reach with my right hand across to the left leg, and then I'm going to try and push, pull the leg to the right, turning slightly away. Then come back, I'm going to grab hold of the legs, I'm going to pull the legs to the left, and then I'm going to try and turn the opposite way. So encouraging again a little rotation from side to side. If I'm laying down, I need to pull on the legs as gravity is working with me. I'm just going to let the arms open up nice and wide. And then turning the hips to the right, I'm going to roll the hips and roll the legs to one side. Bring them back to center. And then I'm going to roll them the other way. So feeling the hips are turning as the hips are turned and the back rotates, the pelvis rotates. See if you can notice in a little bit of tension into the side of the belly, the obliques are working to help me pull the legs back to the center, back to the middle. Six. Five. Four, three, two, last one, and release it back. We're releasing the hips, adjusting the hips. Adjusting the legs, and then from rotation, same as, same as I've been doing so far, I'm going to go into a little lateral flexion. So I'm going to start hitching the hip up towards the rib cage. So if I'm laying down, the hips are going to stay flat against the mat. I'm just going to try and pull the right hip towards the right side of the rib cage. So I'm going to hitch up on the right, then ease back to the center, hitch up on the left. If I'm seated, Imagine to be lifting the seat 
belt of the chair. So I'm going to try and pull my right seat belt up, ease it back down, pull the left, and then ease back down. So right, back, left, and back. So nice and easy side to side to see if I can, again, ease off of some of the tension, some of the stiffness, and at the same time, see if I can get the obliques so the side of the belly working to create that little lift. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release the back. Adjusting the hips and resetting the neutral. The back should be feeling a little bit warmer, a little bit more mobile. I'm going to start focusing on the shoulder and the hip joint. So starting with the shoulder, I'm going to start off with a nice and easy front raise. So I'm going to raise the right arm up to the front and going as far up as I feel comfortable, as far back as I can. Then easing the arm back. And then with the left, I'm going to do the same. Same as usual, if I'm lying down, I'm working with gravity. So the movement is generally easier unless there is restriction on the shoulder. If I'm sitting up, I'm working against the gravity. So the arm is heavy, <coughs> I have to lift it up. So making sure that to take the arm up, I'm not shrugging the shoulder, I'm not stiffening and creating tension into the neck. So see if I can keep it loose, maybe making the movement a little bit smaller, but making sure that there is no pain in the joint. So it feels relaxed, just trying to use it. And uh, the least amount of effort possible so that I can relax into the movement. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, last one, and releasing down, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll, relaxing the shoulders, releasing the arm, I'm going to change the direction of the movement. Instead of a, of a front raise, I'm going to go into a lateral raise. So I'm going to swing the right arm out to the side, bring it around into a big arc, and then I'm going to take it back the same way. Then with the left, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to swing it around, and then I'm going to swing it back. Same as you did for the front raise, making sure that the movement is only as big or small as it works for the shoulder. So again, it doesn't feel as if it's causing pain in the shoulder or stiffness and tension into the neck. So I might bring the arm slightly forward to the body line, if I can, I'm going to keep it straight to the side. It depends on how um, much tension there is across the front of the chest and how the shoulder feels with that movement. And then as I'm moving one arm at a time, I might find that one arm moves bigger than the other. Again, that's fine. I'm not going to force the arm that is not moving as much. I don't want to cause myself a pain on that side. Four. Three, two, last one, and release it back. Releasing the shoulders, relaxing the arms. I'm going to try again, going back into the front, into the front raise, but this time instead of lifting one, I'm going to lift the both arms. So imagine to have like a um, really heavy object or a really large object that you've got to put on the top shelf. So I'm going to start lifting it up and then I'm going to bring it down. So I'm going to take the arms up and back. 
back as far as I can, and then I'm going to return them back to the front. As far as arms are lifting this time, it's easier to feel the shoulders, making sure that it doesn't feel as if the shoulders are shrugging to the head, but more than anything, making sure that your head, your chin, your face is not suddenly poking forward. So the back of the neck, it doesn't feel stiff and it doesn't feel as if it's dancing. See if I can keep the head on top of the chest, keeping the neck nice and relaxed as I'm lifting up and down. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, and release them back, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. And then from a front raise, I'm going to go into a lateral raise again, both arms together again. So I'm going to scoop both arms round, I'm going to swing them round into that big arc, and then I'm going to take them back. So bringing the arc slightly forward, same as before, making it a little bit smaller, making sure that I'm not forcing the movement, I'm not creating tension. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And Releasing back, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. So shoulder again, feeling a little bit warmer, the movement to feel hopefully a little bit smoother. I'm going to try the same thing, but working on the hip joint. So first thing I want to make sure that the muscles are going to um, respond a little bit more. So I'm going to try and see if I can get them to tense, get them to tighten up. So I'm going to start off with a little lifting. So I'm going to grab hold of the ball or the pillar, especially if you're um, laying down and putting the hand on your thigh might be a little bit too far. So I don't want to create any tension, any stiffness into the neck. So I'm going to put the pillow, the ball between my right hand and my right thigh, my right leg. If I'm seated up, I don't even need that. I can just put the hand directly onto the leg. And then with the hand, I'm going to push down with the leg I'm going to try and lift up. So see if I can try and find the tension deep into the front of the hip. So I'm going to try and pull up on the right leg and then ease that tension, pull up on the right leg and then ease the tension. So see if I can get the hip flexor going and also see if I can be aware of that gentle tension on the right side of the belly that is helping me to stabilize that lift, that pressure. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten and release, relaxing the hip or releasing the leg. I'm going to try the same thing, but working on the left side. So I'm going to switch the ball on the left leg, or put the hand directly onto that left side, and then pushing down with the hand to see if I can try and get the left leg to lift. So I'm going to try and pull up on the left, 
and relax. So noticing the tension again into the front of that left hip and into the front side of the belly on that left side. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Relaxing the hip, releasing the arm. From heat flexion, I'm going to go in, into hip adduction. So I'm going to try and get into the inner thigh. So I'm going to set the pillow or the ball this time between the knees, between the legs. And then taking a deep breath in, as I breathe out, I'm going to squeeze the knees into the ball, into the pillow. So I'm going to try and press the knees together. Then I'm going to ease the pressure and then I'm going to press them, press them again. So think of the tension, see if you can think of the tension coming along the inside of the leg towards the hip or towards the groin. Again, a little tension at the front of the belly to help me stabilize that squeeze. And then notice if there is any difference between the right and the left side. As sometimes one leg seems to be kind of like holding or the other one is doing the pushing. See if I can be aware of both legs are trying to squeeze in, trying to squeeze together. Four. Five. See if I can maybe start putting a little bit more tension. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, and release it back. Isn't the pressure releasing the inner thigh, relaxing the feet, relaxing the leg, and then from the side of the leg, I'm going to move into the back of the leg. So this time I'm going to try and push down. So I'm going to focus on one leg at the time. So I'm going to push down through the right foot to see if I can feel tension into the back of the leg and into the back of the bone on that side. Then I'm going to release the pressure and then again push down into the right foot and then release. Push down into that right foot and release. Three. Four, Relaxing the leg, sinking with the left to side. So I'm going to push down with the left foot, see if I can find a connection into the back of the leg, back of the bone. And then I'm going to relax. Then again, push down and relax. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and release it back. Releasing the leg, relaxing the hip. And then we're left with the side of the leg, with the side of the hip. 
So this time I'm going to use the band. I'm going to place the band, the strap around the right leg. And then I'm going to hold it with the left side. I'm going to hold the leg in with the left hand. And then with the right leg, I'm going to try and push out to the right. So see if I can create a tension this time into the side of the hip. Then I'm going to release the pressure. And then again, I'm going to push the right leg out to the right again. And then ease that pressure. So finding the tension into the side of the hip again, a little tension through the middle, helping me to stabilize the hips as the leg is pushing its way to the side. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten, and release. Relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. I'm going to switch the band around that left thigh this time. And then holding the band with the right hand, I'm going to pull the leg in gently. With the left leg, I'm going to try and push out against the band. And then ease that pressure. So same as I did on the other side, you see if I can picture the connection, this time coming down the side of the leg, into the side of the hip, into the side of the bar. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and release and back. Relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. So hopefully I feel a little bit more connection around the hip joint. I'm going to start to getting into a slightly bigger movement. So I'm going to start getting into circles. If you know that the leg is quite heavy, quite temperamental, I would still put the band around the back of the right leg so that I can use my arms to guide the leg into that circle. If I feel that I've got control of the leg, I can do something without any support, then I'm just going to keep the leg free to move on its own. And then imagine a pencil stuck to the very tip of your knee. I'm going to start to draw in circles on the wall in front of me. So I'm going to circle around and then come back to the center. Circle around and come back to the center. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. I'm going to reverse the circle. I'm going to draw my circle the other way. One. Two. Three. Four. 
three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And release it back. Relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. I'm going to repeat the same thing with the left side. So again, if you need a little support, and switching the band around to the back of the left leg so that I can use my arms to encourage the leg to circle, to encourage the hip joint to move. And then once the, the band is set, the same as I did on the other side, I'm going to see if I can start to get to into that circle. So picturing that pencil sticking out from the front of the knee, See if I can start drawing circles with that pencil. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then reverse in the circle going the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and releasing back, releasing the hip, releasing the leg. This is a little bit more movement into the hip joint. I'm going to try and see if I can start to do it. A little bit of combined movement above and below. So shuffling the feet and the knees nice and close together, straightening out the back as if I can sit up nice and tall if I'm seated down on the chair. I'm going to raise the arms up to the front. And then at the same time, I want the arms to swing to the right, the legs to push to the left. So I'm going to turn my hips long one way, the shoulders the other. Then swing the other way, turning the Arms to the left with the hips to the right. And then swapping again to the other side. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And release it back. Returning the arms and the legs to the middle. 
and then changing the direction of the movement. I'm going to go for a little front rise. So imagine your right arm attached to your left, to your right leg. So same side. I'm going to pull the string, I'm going to lift the arm and then try to pick up the right foot from the ground. Then I'm going to release back. And then with that left hand, I'm going to try and pull up on the left leg and then ease it back. So imagine to be puppeting your legs and using the arm. So string attaches your right hand to your right leg. As I pull with the right arm with my right leg, it comes up. As I pull with my left arm, the left leg, it comes up. It could be a very little lift. It could be no lift. It doesn't matter. See if you can try and find the connection between the arm and the leg. Six. Five. Four, three, two, last one, and release and down. Relaxing the hips and releasing the shoulders. And then I'm going to try again. With this thumb, I'm going to try and cross over. So imagine the string attaching your right hand to your left leg. So I'm going to pull with the right arm, but it's my left leg that comes up this time. He's back, pull with my left arm, is the right leg that comes up this time. So opposite sides working together. Notice if there is any difference. So sometimes lifting across can feel a bit easier than lifting same side or vice versa just to see if I can picture the connection. So my right arm and my left leg, my left arm and my right leg. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one, and release it back. Relaxing the hips, releasing the legs, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the arms. And when you're ready, if you're lying down, going over onto the side and in your own time, pushing yourself up into sitting. Finding your comfortable seated position. So making sure that you're trying to sit as upright as possible. Lean onto something behind if you feel that you need that support placing the hands behind you if you feel that you're going to fall back or you feel a little bit unbalanced back. Once you feel that the hips are set and the legs are in a comfortable position, then we're going to start lifting. So lifting at the front of the body, imagine to be stretching from your pubic bone all the way up to the tip of your chin. So I'm going to start lifting the belly. I'm going to try and lift to the chest. I'm going to look forward. I'm going to look up. I'm going to look behind. Then I'm going to ease. I'm going to close that front line as if I'm trying to drop the chin down onto the pubic bone. I'm going to come forward as far as I feel comfortable. And then back up again. I'm going all the way back. I'm trying to lengthen, lifting through the belly. The front of the ribcage, looking forward, looking up, looking back. And then coming forward, closing the front of the body, opening at the back, letting the chin drop, the shoulders go forward, rounding and pulling the ribcage as far forward as I can. Last time. I'm curling all the way back up, extending, lifting as much as I can. And release it forward. One hand to the belly, one hand to the back. Take your bow, give yourself a clap of that. Any question or anything as usual, please say. Remember, you need to unmute yourself. 